When we had last left the Spacefarer, they were on a mission to finally assemble every single artifact piece that was somewhere in the settled systems, and were contending with both the Emissary and the Hunter, yes, the two Starborn, to reach the Unity. But before that, they had to, of course, gather up more artifact pieces, two of which were missing. One was somewhere at the Nashina Research Station, a place that seemed quite mundane, quite normal. But upon closer investigation, the space bearer was tossed between two universes, one of a more clinical ilk and one that had a horrifying disaster that had spelled doom for many of the people that were there. Now was time to travel back and forth sorting out a horrifying monster situation and claiming the artifact all the way super deep down at the research center. This is Starfield. Welcome back. Zoop, zoop, zoop. There we are. Now, should I also consume another heal? Prognosis is good. It's probably fine, right? We could stand to eat and drink, though. I mean, I could take some, right? Do I have an orange and a yellow? I do. Or did I? Did I just go through it real quick? Yeah, I, mean, I, I maybe just went through it too quick. Okay. Do I have just an orange? No. Oh, not there, I don't. I'll eat a chicken, too. Do I have just a solo orange? There we go. Heal gel. Good. May as well pump up our prognosis a little bit more. Okay. Cool skeleton. Big door with a lot of lighting. Uh-oh. Juvenile Kataxi Hunter. Oh, it's burrowing. Okay. Are we good? Combat music started just as we killed it. I think, yeah, I think we're good. Okay, is this the room we were in earlier? I think? I think so. Well? Yeah, here's the save. Okay, yeah, it was. Good. So then we need only go through... This brightly lit door, which we probably can't open yet. We have to go around. Okay. That's fine. Let's quick save just in case. Oh, got another one here. Oh, shit. Are there more? No, I think we're fine. Okay. Right. Let's do a quick save. Hmm. Oh, there's a whole lot. Oh god. Got one. Oh hey, there's someone fighting in there. Is it Raphael? God, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. All right. Hello. Oh, oh, it's you. It is. What happened? It, you disappeared, and the ceiling caved in, and and uh, I thought I'd finally lost it. Well, <laughs> don't write yourself off just yet. I met with the director. We have to shut down the probe. I need to get into the fabrication lab. Are you all right? Are you all right? I'll manage. Look, can we just go? Okay, well, I met with the director. We have to shut down the probe. What? How? Look, if you think things are bad up here, the research level is even worse. I barely made it out, and that was months ago. I don't understand any of this. If I hadn't seen you disappear with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. I... Okay, okay. 
You're my ticket out of here. We'll do this your way. We can get out through the pantry. Here's the key. I'll back you up, I guess. Okay. Anything else? I just want to get out of here. What will happen when I shut down the probe? We'll just exhaust all these. What will happen when I shut down the probe? I'm not sure. It might stop whatever's happening to you. It's a reasonable theory, I guess. Where are these creatures coming from? They're a native species. We had an electric pulse field to keep them out. Really? The fire took out the generators, damaged the foundation. They just keep coming. Why are they so gross? Can you tell me about the accident? I was in the lab, working on the frequency calibration for the probe. I was walking out of the control room when it happened. I heard the tanks rupture. The alarm sound. I only had a second to react. I jumped back into the control room. The door sealed. I was safe. From the gas. The fire. Everything. But I was trapped. There was nothing I could do to stop it. If I had gone the other way, maybe I could have made it to the ventilation controls. Killed the system. Even if it killed me. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. Mm. And in another universe, he did. Right? Okay. Sure. Man, I'm so curious how they'll write around this with shattered space, right? Like, is that being made under the assumption that the player has gone through all of the core game story? Because that completely changes what you could write in, doesn't it? I don't know, maybe not. Because there wouldn't be any artifact pieces there, right? At, um, the House of Arun area. Why would there be? Because we're assembling them all, presum presumptively. Okay, anything else here? Nah. Alright. Maybe I'll take a trauma pack or something real quick. An extended heal. There we are. Good. Okay. Pantry key card. Oh, more of them. Got your ass. Seems like more on the way. Oh, fuck. Holy what the? How did Security you... breach! Go! Everybody go! <laughs> Man, what if I just started shooting them? But instead, I'm just going to start taking all their food. <laughs> Look, this person here is just like, yep, just another Tuesday at work. <laughs> okay. Good. Going to take all this. Grilled cheeses, Reuben, sweet rolls, chicken, another Reuben, a peach. Do I have a key for this? You would think the keys would work either way, right? Because they're the same location. Okay. Though maybe I didn't have a key for this door, right? Maybe, yeah, did I just walk in? I think I maybe just walked in. Also, is this the- is this not the Aselli's? Yeah, Cuts of Aselli's, the Butcher's Guide. Ribs, Chuck, anything, like, different? Trotters. Which one would the Trotters be? Three... Six... <laughs> seven, eight. Oh, it's like hooves, the Trotters. What about the Blade? Five? That's the blade? Maybe kind of like how you refer to a, a shoulder blade? Hmm. Fifteen is the hind plate. Tenderloin. Where's that at? Eighteen? Oh, right there. What's the best part, I wonder? Hmm. Sirloin? Right there. Which I guess is universal, say, you know, like flank. Yeah. 
Acelles are delicious and nutritious. Cool. Well, let's get out of here. Prognosis is improving. You can see other parts of the facility. Drink their milk. Uh-oh, here we go. Hey, you're not dead. I feel like for one of these, we're gonna, f like, flip back, and Raphael's gonna be a fucking cold body on the floor. Hey. Uh-oh. Got anything to say after that? I just wanna get out of here. Okay, fair enough. He's used to it now. Got him. Did I get them all? Really, though? I think so. Okay. Three of them in there. Sounded like another, however. Turn on the lights. Got a computer. Very well lit. Okay. Security office computer. Security logs. Security log, Revolution 8, Day 64. Okay. We'll just start from the top. Daily log opened. Security Chief Ethan Hughes on duty. Warning, power surge in High Energy Research Lab. Raphael is running some tests for Maria. Suppressed warning. Emergency, Class 4. Explosion detected in High Energy Research Lab. Emergency, lockdown active. Error. Unable to connect to research level control system. Warning. Hydrogen gas detected in air interchange. Warning. Particulates detected in air interchange. Declared emergency. Senior staff called. There's been some kind of explosion in the lab. Whole place is locked down. I'm dealing with the lockdown. Maria's looking into the experiment. The director's on the gas leak. Dr. Barakova is standing by. No word from Raphael. Warning. Hydrogen concentration approaching dangerous levels. Gas leak is bad. It's coming from the lab. We can't get down there to shut it off. Emergency, class 5. Warning, hydrogen concentration at dangerous levels. Warning, immediate evacuation recommended. Primary circuit to the research level is fried. Can't reconnect because I can't end the lockdown. Can't end the lockdown because I can't connect. Can't evac because of the lockdown. Can't shut down the air interchange. One spark in this whole place goes up like a tinderbox. Emergency, class 10. The log ends. This is the most recent log entry. I wonder what the source, of the source spark was. Archived files. Survey team report. Planet Freya 3, specific gravity, 0.82 Gs. Habitable atmosphere, why? Habitable temperature, why? Yes, I assume. Local eagles, ecosystem, complete micro flora fauna. Analysis, this is a nightmare world. Oh, sure, Scan scans look nice. Breathable atmosphere, near-Earth gravity, habitable temps at the mid-latitudes, fully established ecosystem, maybe even some useful organics. Don't let it fool you. Everything here is out to get you. The apex predators, Kataxi, are burrowing carnivores with near impenetrable shells and deadly venom. The herbivores are aggressive with wi and wildly territorial. Local flora defends itself with some of the strongest psychotropics we've seen. Even the oceans are polluted with heavy metals and organic compounds that'll melt your skin if you aren't protected. If we have to set up a facility here, we need a high-end electric pulse to keep the fauna at bay and a full-time doctor and security team on standby in case some idiot decides to go for a walk. Hmm. I wonder if the other universe's version of this planet has all of these, I don't know, accoutrements as well. Or if that alternate universe, things didn't play out on the planet. Right? Okay, supplemental report, Kataxi. Right, because what, what if the Kataxi don't even exist on our, I guess, our prime universe? Right? I assume. 
Kataxi appear to be the native apex predators of Freya 3, resembling large old earth scorpions. They're particularly notable for their highly aggressive nature, incredible facility at burrowing, tough, chitinous shells, and powerful venom. In the wild, Kataxi are ambush hunters, digging extensive warrens and using highly developed vibra vibrational sensilae to detect approaching prey and ambush it from the most opportune vantage. Initial scans suggest Kataxi colonies may extend as far as several kilometers beneath the surface, preying on other burrowing creatures in Freya's extensive cave networks. Oh, which is unfortunate because they dug their their research lab like kilometers below surface too. Or maybe they didn't even dig it. Maybe they used a pre-existing hole. As Kataxi track their prey with vibrations, they are immune to flash-type grenades. However, a strong vibrational disruptive, like an electric pulse field, should be effective at keeping them at bay. Kataxi have evolved reinforced chitinous plating that makes them highly resistant to conventional impact and ballistic weapons. Initial confrontations suggest cryonics-based energy may be significantly more effective at repulsing them. When their ambush is insufficient, Kataxi rely on neurotoxin venom to fell larger prey. Resistant environmental suits and adequate medical supplies are essential for survival outside a secured perimeter. Kataxi should be considered extremely dangerous and are to be avoided if at all possible. So if we had any, like, cryo or pulse-based weapons, certainly ballistic is no good. Download survey data. Survey data for Freya 3 downloaded. Okay. Great. <laughs> Can we take that to, um, Vladimir? All right. Hey. Look at this. It's going to take hours to clear this out. Assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. Well, what now? This looks like a dead end. How should I know? You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. Okay, so we'll just have to whoosh again. But how do I activate that? It just kind of happens. Oh, going in here? Yeah, I've whooshed. Oh, hello? Anything in here I should take? <coughs> Ethan Hughes? What? I... Oh, it's you. You realize you just popped into my locked office. So much for security protocols. I'm trying to get to the fabrication lab. Seems to be happening a lot lately. Just open the doors, please. I'm trying to get to the fabrication lab. Uh, sure. Down the hall. Take the stairs next to the atrium. Yeah, let me get the doors for you. Hmm. And what if... Is there anything else you need? Oh. Persuade. I need something to fight the Kataxi in the other universe. Are there any scorpions native to this planet? What can you tell me about the research level? The director said the research level is locked down? Let's exhaust the questions first and then go for the persuade. But I wonder... When we, like, wink out of existence, when we, like, phase shift or whatever... Is that what the enemy Starborn are doing when we kill them? Right? Like, are they not actually dead? That's why there's no remains? Or is the, like, little sparkles that get left behind, are those actually the remains? Right? You would think that because there's, like, they're physical matter. They're not, like, gaseous or whatever, right? Lot on your mind. When we kill them, are we not actually killing them? And that's why we get no loot? Even though they're obviously wearing items? You know, and they're wielding weapons. It's not like biomechanical. It's not a part of them. Are th are we are they actually like last minute warping to a different universe where they're safe? Right? Is that what's actually happening? Hmm. Okay. Not honestly, not unlike us getting killed in the game too. 
right? We reload a previous save and we continue forward, right? And I even jokingly refer to it, not just in this game, but in a lot right. that it's another universe where things played out differently, you know, where, where it all goes according to plan, right? Maybe, maybe is, is the same holding true there? Like when we kill a starborn enemy, are they effectively like reloading another save? Hmm. Anyway, anyway. Are there any scorpions native to this planet? Uh, yes. Kataxi. Nasty things. Right. The original survey team ran across them. You're welcome to read the old logs if you want. Yeah, I'll unlock the terminal for you. What can you tell me about the research level? Bigger than you'd expect. We've got a particle accelerator, whole lab complex, the high energy research lab. Real state of the art. Can't tell you what a tenth of it actually does. Hmm. The director said the research level is locked down? That's right. Has been since the accident. We can't connect to the control system to override it. The whole system's on a head trigger. Camera spot anyone not in the staff database. They fire off an alarm and all hell breaks loose. Okay. Persuade. I need something to fight the Kataxi in the other universe. I want to know why these two universes are, like, linked together, right? Why am I only shifting between these two specific ones? You know? Like, what happens if I take an artifact from my non-home universe? You know? Would it even work with the armillary? Right? Like, what if I'm in the wrong one? And I take, it's, it's still the same artifact piece, but it's not from the universe that the rest of the pieces are from, right? What the fuck will happen? Yeah, because in this universe... Well? Yeah, in the, in the fucked up one, I wouldn't even have all the armillary stuff, would I? Right? Hmm. Okay. Uh, Persuade, I need something to fight the Kataxi in the other universe. The Kataxi in the other universe. Uh-huh. Wow. Come on, Our I just appeared behind you through a locked door. the engineers put together. But... Uh... There's no reason for us to have a problem, is there? Give me what I want, or you'll never get rid of me. Hand it over, now. <laughs> Let's try the high one. Hand it over now. Oh my god, it worked. We are just talking, right? Well, there's no reason then for us to have a problem, is there? Now how about you just hand it over? There's no reason for us to have a problem, is there? Sorry, but I cannot. Wow, it, it didn't work. I understand. I'm not trying to make things difficult. I don't have time for this. I understand. I'm not trying to make things difficult. Look, there we go. I'd like to help, but... All right. Yeah. <laughs> but all right. <laughs> it's never been field tested, but all yours. Some kind of shotgun. There's too much text in the way. Experiment A7. Okay. So what's it do? What kind of shells does it take, more importantly? Oh, thank God it's the ones that I have. Oh, it does extra alien damage. That's not terrible. I guess we'll use it. Sure. Flechette rounds. Oh, it's fully automatic. Okay. Huh. Nothing pulse or cryo related though, it seems. Security office computer. Same, same. Archive file, survey team report. This is a nightmare world, okay. So no matter what. All right, the Kataxi, sure. Security logs. All right, and this is this is different. The security log is different because, of course, uh, Raphael acted differently here. Revolution 8, day 64. Daily log opened. Security Chief Ethan Hughes on duty. Warning, power surge in high energy research lab. Raphael is running some tests for Maria. Suppressed warning. Emergency, class four. Explosion detected in high energy research lab. 
Emergency lockdown active. Error, unable to connect to research level control room. Warning, hydrogen gas detected in air interchange. Warning, particulates detected in air interchange. Declared emergency, senior staff called. Alert, hydrogen gas no longer detected in air interchange. Ah. There's been some kind of explosion in the lab. Whole place is locked down. I'm dealing with the lockdown. Maria's looking into the experiment. Dr. Barakova and the director are standing by. No word from Raphael. I've shut off the audible alarm. Director thinks the earthquakes are more explosions, or whole sections of the research level caving in. Primary circuit to the research level is fried. Can't reconnect because I can't end the lockdown. Can't end the lockdown because I can't connect. I'm going to have to decouple the security system just to kill the lockdown up here. Cancelled lockdown for surface facility. Everything up here looks good, but there's no way of telling what's happened on the research level. It's no use. Elevator's locked out. If Raphael made it, he could end the lockdown from his end. But short of that, we're dead in the water. Until the consortium sends a drilling team. Director Patel declared the emergency over. Senior staff meeting just wrapped. Raphael's presumed dead. We're going to set up makeshift labs up here and do the best we can until our relief arrives. It's going to be a long four months. Shift change. The log continues with routine business for the rest of the day. This folder contains security logs for hundreds of other days, stretching back at least four years. Hmm. Okay. Sure. Oh, here's that same weapon case. I'll take the ammo. Should I pop it? Why not? Maybe there'll be something good this time. I'll do an auto slot. Get that in there. Another auto slot. And then this one. Light particle fuse. Refined Varun Star Shard. Eh. Do another quick save here. Okay. On the bright side, this shotgun I can use up close. A nymph, Kataxi. It says it's fully auto, but the fire rate is still quite low. Alright. Uh oh. <laughs> Fucking A. Uh oh. Uh oh. God, it sounds like they're everywhere, dude. Maybe it's another floor above or below me? Freaking me the fuck out. Right? <laughs> Headphone audio sounds like they're they're just ready to fuck Ooh, God fuck me up at a moment's notice. Holy shit, the person the mannequin scared the shit out of me. Okay. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Is there like a person type one? They're like hybridizing, they're merging with people. Wide out, infantry alpha. Okay, anything else? Now we're good. Bunch of blood. Not mine. Maybe Raphael's. Okay. We really lucked out with this, um... Sharing ammo type with what I already had. Oh, God! Fuck off! Jesus. Okay. I get them all? I think so. Quite the little skirmish, the little scrap. 
Okay. Certainly the extreme difficulty makes it a lot more scary. Right? I forgot how much extreme amps up the damage, but it is definitely noticeable. Right? Okay. That's it. It also helps that these are more level or close to our level range. Okay. Anything in here? Nah. Hello? Just going to take your money and digipick. Good. What, did you get lost in the hallway? Yeah. It was blocked in the other universe. Just get on with it. It was blocked in the other universe. Uh, <laughs> Alright. This is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. Pay attention and be ready for anything. Okay, let's do a hard save in case I want a picture of you. I'll begin by adjusting the energy feed of the electron beam array. We're at 93 teravolts. Calibrating to 95, 97, 100. Ugh, nothing. Let's try the other way. 91, 89. Uh-oh. What the? What? Oh. Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach. But what in the world? Yeah, I know what these are. Oh. It's a micro distortion. Flux pattern matches the distortion in the lab. The setting is just exposing it somehow. Hmm. Step into the distortion, please. Yeah, I tried to do that. All right, you first. Is that safe? Is this what I've been passing through? Is this what I've been passing through? It's possible. That's what I want to test. If that is what's happening, what does that mean? How many of these distortions are there? All around us, all this time, and we've never noticed. So every time I was inside one of those temples, I was going through these. Was I, like, rapidly shifting universes right then inside of the temple? But because I was inside of them, I couldn't tell? Is that safe? I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, all right, I'll do it. I can't Nothing. move. No, hold on. There's a slight pattern change. Some kind of resonance. All right, stay there. Let me turn the feedback up for a moment. Calibrating to 90, 91. Uh-oh. Okay. Sure. Probe control unit. It's quite valuable. Okay, I'll take that. Can I actually fire it? Is it a weapon? No. Okay. Sure. What happened? Are you alright? It worked. You could have warned me. It worked. So, the lower setting causes the distortions to manifest, and the higher causes you to shift. That seems promising. Keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift, and you should be able to avoid any more accidents. I'd give you my control unit, but it looks like you already have one from the other universe. Love to take a look at that when this is all over. Yeah, it's honestly kind of amazing that this one was intact, given the explosion. What the fuck is this made out of? Alright, time to shut this down. Just tell me what I need to do. Do you want to test anything else? To ask. Uh, no. No, we still don't understand what we're dealing with here. If we found something that works, let's not press our luck. You may want to practice shifting just to make sure this works reliably. Closer to the distortion, conditions may be less stable, if that's possible. Wow, so we, we're really just going to have free reign to shift. Okay. 
Just tell me what I need to do. If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the High Energy Research Lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It really is just down the hall. Okay. You know what, here, this is a better time to do a hard save. Okay, check it out. Maria's incident report. Oh, okay. Incident report, author Maria Hughes, chief scientist. Date of incident, Revolution 8, day 64. Time of incident, 0058. At 2100 on day 63, I've requested that Chief Engineer Rafael Aguero conduct an out-of-band frequency calibration test on the probe to assess the interference pattern noted by the research team earlier in the day. Pursuant to that request, he was alone in the lab at the time of the incident. According to the data gathered by the probe control unit, the calibration test triggered a catastrophic feedback loop that overloaded the lab's control system and caused a cascading series of failures, including the destruction of key failsafes. The explosion of volatile storage tanks and a major cave-in or collapse of unknown severity, Raphael is presumed to have died in the explosion. The incident triggered an automated security lockdown on the research level, as the incident also destroyed our connection to the research level's control system, we've been unable to lift the lockdown or access the lab. The probe control unit indicates that the probe somehow survived the incident and continues to run. Yes, somehow. So they even lampshaded here, albeit in a damaged state, at an unstable frequency outside designated experimental parameters. All attempts to shut it down remotely have failed. I accept full responsibility for the entire incident, including the loss of Mr. Aguero, the destruction of our facilities, and the irreparable damage to our research program. Hmm. Yeah, that's wild that the probe control unit survives every time. Okay. Can calibrate that. Sure. So anytime I see those, I can manually pass through now, it seems. Okay. Sure. Well, let's go down the hall. Hmm. Okay. Hello? Well then, all set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you, and to us. Mmm, research methods check. It's Schrodinger's box. Two potential states. <laughs> you tell me. There's no way to know. I'm going to be stuck wherever I am. Let's do the check. It's Schrodinger's box. Two potential states. Exactly. And when you shut down the experiment, the probability function will collapse. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in, at that moment, is what will become real. For you, and your universe, at least. Right. The question is, which will you choose? I don't know. I'm going to choose you, this universe. I'm going to choose Raphael, his universe. He needs my help more. Can I ask some questions? Can I ask you something? Of course. What will happen to the other universe? I mean, it won't die or whatever, right? It'll just persist without me being able to access it. What is shocking is that... Is that the other one will become mine, right? Like, how identical is it to everything else, right? Wouldn't that imply that there's another one of me if I meld with the other universe? Hmm. Or is it merely just contained within this research lab, within this area? Right? Well, I don't fucking know. What will happen to the other universe? I don't know. I'm not sure it's possible to know. It may cease to exist. It was one possible universe, but not what actually happened. We, or Raphael, actually did die months ago. 
or it may remain real, just not in your universe. Or in some quantum sense, perhaps you make both choices and both outcomes will be real. Welcome to quantum mechanics. What about everything outside Nishina? Nothing will change. Nothing can change. If the universe was other than it was, you would not be here to make this choice. What you choose will be what happened in your universe, the universe that brought you to this point. What? Can I ask that again? What about everything outside Nishina? Nothing will change. Nothing can change. If the universe was other than it was, you would not be here to make this choice. What you choose will be what happened in your universe, the universe that brought you to this point. Isn't that like a little essentialist, though, in that every single thing is essentialist even the right word here? I don't know. But she's implying that every single thing would have needed to be identical outside of Nishina in both universes in order for me to arrive here. But that can't be true, right? There's no, There can't be, like, across everything, a situation where, you know, everything needs to have happened exactly the same, right? There, There's no instance of, like, oh, you moved a chair an inch to the left, and suddenly, you know, a whole bunch of shit just changed or whatever, right? Obviously, that's a little ridiculous, but something along the lines of, like, Oh, you met this People individual and introduced them to a certain about. book or got them inspired to pursue a certain line of work, right? And then it's a chain reaction event in that way. The like that would still happen, right? Like nothing like like nothing like that would necessarily involve me. Right? I'm not sure if I understand why that is the case. Can I hear that again? Nothing will change. Nothing can change. If the universe was other than it was, you would not be here to make this choice. What you choose will be what happened in your universe, the universe that brought you to this point. Right, but that's also short-sighted too, isn't it? Because everything being as it was here only exists in this universe. If I go over to the other one, where Raphael is alive and all of you all are dead... There was nothing in that universe that brought me there to make that choice, right? If anything, and you don't know this, there's it sounds like there's a high likelihood that I would be dead in that universe, right? That I exist in a dead state. Hmm. Like, I, I feel like they're very obviously trying to create a means for which it's all right when you're ready everything else remains the same right because this is one quest in one area but in reality wouldn't this be a huge pivotal moment wherein we're choosing a bl we're blindly choosing another universe where we don't know what the hell to expect at all right like why would it all have to be the same that doesn't make sense to me you know why would both of them have to be the same? Nothing in Raphael's, living Raphael's universe compelled me to go there, right? I may even be dead there, you know? Hmm. And granted as well, obviously this person doesn't fully fucking understand all of this, right? Because of, you know, all of the research and everything. I think it may... Huh. I I guess I guess what what I'm saying is that I'm at odds with myself here over this being a handy explanation for how the story would work, right? To make the rest of the game make sense in how after this quest I could theoretically go back and you know, for instance, if I hadn't started the UC Vanguard quests, I could go start those up and everything would be as it was. But in truth, if I chose Raphael's universe, there's absolutely no guarantee that that would be available to me, right? For all I know, um, that's completely blocked off, right? We both have a lot to think about. Like, even in a case where I'm alive there, maybe that version of me did something else, right? Hmm. 
What do you think I should do? Hmm. If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. I mean, yeah, but you are in danger. as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. Thirty people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe. But won't you all continue to ex exist? Right? When we're talking about the other universe, that's only relative from my perspective, right? Because you all are living entities, it will continue to exist in, because you all perceive it to exist, right? I mean, unless you want to get really fucking meta, you're right. Like, you should say that your universe, like, whichever one I don't pick, will cease to exist because I won't be there. Because I'm the fucking player, right? That's the real horror. What will happen to the other universe? Let's ask that again. I don't know. I'm not sure it's possible to know. Hmm. It may cease to exist. It was one possible universe, but not what actually happened. We or Raphael actually did die months ago. Or it may remain real, just not in your universe. Or in some quantum sense, perhaps you make both choices and both outcomes will be real. Welcome to quantum mechanics. Right. Huh. Ooh, that's fascinating. I do like that that she says that she doesn't know. Right? That is good. Right? And that frankly feels very true to BGS's way of writing, especially when it comes to shit like this with Elder Scrolls, right? A lot of it is deliberately left up in the air and open to player interpretation and that sort of gives them a lot of freedom and they're what they're doing here isn't too far removed right but in this case take your time given the multiversal shit and and whatnot i think her last statement would be correct you know everything could have happened you know both could be true but at the same time, they wouldn't be because that would be me in another universe, right? If I came back here and I did this again in another universe, that would just be that universe's decision where there's this double split, right? Because no matter what universe I'm in, I'll always come to this point and there'll always be this decision. It'll always split off here, you know? Because I never interact with the me of Raphael's universe, right? Somehow that always just splits right there. It's not from a completely different universe. It's born from from them fucking with the, the artifact, right? Which I guess is made like a paradox. Am I misunderstanding this? Huh. I do like this sort of darker and tr more tragic idea that whichever universe the player decides to not be in ceases to exist. Right? Huh. It's all right. When you're ready. Because in either, like, that, that would absolutely influence my decision making, right? Knowing which is the case. But of course they're keeping it up in the air as to like what is true and how it how it functions because of course if the alternate universe ceases to exist of course i should pick the director's universe right uh because there's so much more life that continues to exist right i'm choosing uh more life and more opportunity and more people get to continue to exist whereas Raphael is like just a single person you know, if if I'm having a trolley question, right, as it were, I'm I'm choosing mm. less loss of life by willing Raphael's universe out of existence, you know, by not being there to perceive its existence, it ceases to exist. That said, since we don't know, the director here posits that it may be that that alternate universe continues on to exist without me, you know without a player character to inhabit it. 
which we know if we're thinking on a more meta level, on a gamic level, it doesn't exist, right? It ends right there. Right? If if I do the quest in such a way, all of you all are taken out of the equation. You're removed from the quest. You're I couldn't theoretically come back to see you all if I went with Raphael. Hmm. I think not like it being up in the air. Right? The director's saying, I don't know here. I don't know. Right. I'm not sure it's possible to know. It may cease to exist. It was one possible universe, but not what actually happened. We or Raphael actually did die months ago. Or it may remain real, just not in your universe. Or in some quantum sense, perhaps you make both choices and both outcomes will be real. Welcome to quantum mechanics. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think without knowing, I have to aid Raphael, right? Because there is a chance that this universe does continue to exist. It really seems like it won't, you know? It really seems like it won't because the player won't be here to perceive it, right? Thus, it ceases to exist. But on the off chance that it, it may continue to exist, I should go help Raphael, right? Okay, there's no other way. Not that I can see. All right. Have you reached a decision? I don't know. I'm going to choose you. This universe. I'm going to choose Raphael, his universe. He needs my help more. Yeah, Raphael needs my help more. I see. I won't beg. It's not an easy decision. And perhaps things will still work out for us in the end. Perhaps. Now, it's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so you can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan, unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. It's been a fascinating day. Hmm. Okay. What I would love is what if there were people who weren't as amicable about all this, right? I would want someone to object to me doing it and make me stay here, right? Effectively trapping me in this universe because they don't want it to end. Because they do believe that if the player character is in here to perceive it, then all of it's gone, right? And it's it, like it all is gone on such a level that they don't they aren't even aware that it's gone. That's how fucked up and bad it gets. Okay. Let's see here, pop that in. This and that. And that wasn't too bad. Okay. What all's in here? Chunks. Creds. There's another whooshing unit in here, too. I can hear it whooshing about. Another, what do you call it, distortion. Yeah, in the bathroom. Oh, are these the supplies she was speaking of? No, I don't think so. I think this is something else altogether. Okay. Let's try this. Good. And then, here that'll work, but we don't have three of them close together. If I auto sought. Well, no, that implies that we fucked up already. So let's try that. There we go. Okay. Still don't have three close together. Let's see this. There we are. Eh, just Garbo. Okay, take elevator. Optional, get supplies. Huh. Can Don't I talk, talk to you about- Okay. 
Let's head down over here. You have the supplies? I guess so. Hello. Tatiana Barakova, station's doctor. This is not a public medical facility, but the director has ordered me to assist you nonetheless. I can spare a few med packs. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. If there's anything else you need, ask. I need help, Doc. I could use some medical supplies. What's your problem? Give journal. I think you should see this. What's your problem? Excuse me? Perhaps you'd care to try a dead-end medical post on some godforsaken planet in the middle of nowhere, huh? <laughs> Six-year surgical residency. And I spend my days treating paper cuts and hurt feelings for a bunch of mathematicians and physicists. And now I have to deal with some spacer who thinks they're jumping between universes? Spare me. What journal am I giving you? I guess we'll find out. Give journal. I think you should see this. My journal? Have oh. you been in my quarters? Who do you think you are? The director may have given you run of this station, but I... Wait. Wait. What is this? This entry. It's mine, but... I didn't write this. And the scorch marks... God. Now you believe me. I thought you might want to have it. I wouldn't mind an apology, Doctor. I thought you might want to have it. Yes. Thank you. I can spare a few That's more freaky. supplies. That's freaky. And I'll give you a break on anything else you need. Huh. See, I feel like that, that, that little action right there would fuck up more stuff. I think I still have a few things I could spare. Right? Like, if I gave Dr. Barakova a part from another universe that will continue to exist and this one ceases to exist, what about that that object that was written by a now dead Barakova, right? If it ceases to exist, like, that would be the only thing keeping this one alive because it has to exist in order for that journal entry to persist inside of it. You know? Otherwise, you get a paradox in the new source universe. I'm going to buy all these things that offer treatment. Okay. Good. All right. That ought to do it. Okay. See ya. Anything back here? Advanced lock. We've got this other place. Okay. Sure. And well, let's pick into this other room. There's definitely another distortion in here. But there may be some other loot too. Let's auto socket. Great. Pop that in. Then... Oh dear. Do that, and then like this. Great. Hmm. Some cred sticks here. Take those. Lovely. Fun plant. Oh, Dr. Barakova's journal. Huh. Okay, let's read this one then. This slate contains Dr. Barakova's personal journal. Posted to a 180-day rotation, the doctor is loathed every hour spent treating headaches, paper cuts, and sore feelings after yet another inane scientific argument. A few entries catch your attention. Right, okay, I remember it now. Day 21, 1454. Mr. Hughes reported an emergency with the Particle Accelerator Engineering Team. Code blue, full trauma kit on standby. Was it methane poisoning? A bite from some terrifying venomous life form? No. Evidently, Mr. McCarrick dropped a drill on his foot while assembling the containment housing. Minor bruising, not even a sprain. Clearly, we're dealing with dangerous unknown phenomena here. Day 64, 115. It's been an explosion on the research level. Full security lockdown, alarms blaring. Hughes is trying to regain control. I am, of course, standing by. Day 64, 542. 
Director Patel ordered us to stand down at 5 o'clock. We have one presumed fatality. Mr. Aguero, our chief engineer, was conducting a late-night test when the explosion occurred. There was a brief release of hydrogen gas quickly contained. No other injuries reported. The research level is still locked down. There's apparently no way to get down there, short of an excavation team. That kills the research schedule for the rest of our tour. I suggested sending a distress signal to see if we could re be relieved early. The director shot it down. Four more months. Just four more months. The most recent entry is for day 157. Oh, the distress signal! Right! This one isn't my home universe. Right? Because when we were in space near the planet, our home universe is the one where there was a distress signal. And in here, remember, uh, the security mentioned, Ethan of security mentioned that there was no distress signal here. And in fact, this even backs it up and sort of lampshades, or is a reminder of the fact that that they didn't put out a distress signal, even for something as mundane as what was being requested there. Yeah, so the fucked up one where the explosion happened and only Raphael survived, seemingly. That's, that's our base universe. This is the alternate one. This is the one that we have shifted into. Right? Because our first encounter was with the distress signal. Right? Before we even got close to the artifact, when we were still, uh, like, in orbit around the planetary body. Oh my god. Huh. Okay. So it would be in this universe. Right? So reverse all the, like, invert all of the other shit that I was talking about. Does there exist a version of myself here that's still alive or even dead? Hmm. Yeah, this, this is the one that... This is the universe that was created just for this quest, right? It's split off, you know? If if we go with the idea that the player no longer perceiving the universe causes it to cease to exist, this is the, the one that split off originally, right? This is the Splinter universe. Does that make sense? Hopefully, hopefully this, <laughs> what I'm saying makes some degree of sense and doesn't just sound like fucking mad ramblings. Oh shit, this is locked. Okay. I'll pick in here. Why not? Try that. Good. And that. Good. Okay. Whoa. Whole bunch of booze. Feels fitting for this character. Okay. Pop that in there. Uh-oh. Have I already made an incorrect choice here? Potentially. Ooh, it's looking likely. Okay. Yeah, I definitely did. Okay, we'll auto socket there. Always easiest to do it early on, right? Okay. And then... Great. Oh, not really even anything worthwhile down here. More booze. Okay. Sure. Yeah, this is- this is fascinating to think about. Right? the way in which this works. I, I'm so curious as to how how the game wants to proceed with thinking about the player's perspective and everything. Right? It definitely is... Right? They're, the writing I mean, is definitely interested in it, but I'm not sure how far they're willing to commit. Right? Maybe it will be revealed to us, right? We don't Maybe we will find out. Often. Huh. Okay. Need something? Do you think it's Excuse worth me. us shifting more here? Like, practicing? Maybe. All right. When next we return, we're going to practice shifting around here before we take the elevator. Right? That we may even be able to find some treasure in like Raphael's universe. Right? I I think what may be useful is to go around in this more accessible one, 
look for where there's treasure here and then shift over and then see if we can find the same room with the same treasure or like have more rolls on it or something like that you know because otherwise it should be identical right all of this should be same same shouldn't it all right interesting stuff to think about and consider right all right when next we return all that and more until next time please take care of each other